Ah, the prophet of Islam. Slave trader, child rapist, wife beater, greatest man in history, according to the revelations his narcissistic mind came up with. PP asks, You keep saying he beated his wife. Can you please give me sources for this? I don't mean to poo-poo on your parade, PP, but yes, I can. I'll give you Sahih Muslim 2127, and I'll include the link in the description box so you can read it over and over and over again. In Sahih Muslim 2127, Muhammad sneaks out of Aisha's house in the middle of the night. Aisha doesn't trust him. Can't blame her for that. The guy was a total freak. Who knows what he was doing when he snuck out of the house in the middle of the night. So she follows him in order to keep an eye on him. After he heads home, she runs ahead and gets home before him and pretends to be asleep. But he hears her breathing heavily from running. So he decides to teach her who's boss. Let's read the passage. Muhammad ibn Qais said to the people, Should I not narrate to you a hadith of the Holy Prophet on my authority and on the authority of my mother? We thought that he meant the mother who had given him birth. He, Muhammad ibn Qais, then reported that it was Aisha who had narrated this. Should I not narrate to you about myself and about the Messenger of Allah, yada yada yada? We said, yes, she said, when it was my turn for Allah's Messenger, yada yada yada, to spend the night with me, he turned his side, put on his mantle, and took off his shoes and placed them near his feet, and spread the corner of his shawl on his bed, and then lay down till he thought that I had gone to sleep. He took hold of his mantle slowly and put on the shoes slowly and opened the door and went out and then closed it lightly. I covered my head, put on my veil and tightened my waist wrapper and then went out following his steps till he reached Baki. He stood there and he stood for a long time. He then lifted his hands three times and then returned and I also returned. He hastened his steps and I also hastened my steps. He ran and I too ran. He came to the house, and I also came to the house. I, however, preceded him, and I entered the house. And as I lay down in the bed, he, the holy prophet, entered the house and said, Why is it, O Aisha, that you are out of breath? I said, There is nothing. He said, Tell me, or the subtle and the aware would inform me. I said, Messenger of Allah, may my father and mother be ransomed for you. And then I told him the whole story. He said, was it the darkness of your shadow that I saw in front of me? I said, yes. He struck me on the chest, which caused me pain, and then said, did you think that Allah and his apostle would deal unjustly with you? He struck me on the chest, which caused me pain. He struck me on the chest, which caused me pain. That's right. Don't let her give you no lip, Prophet Muhammad. What's amazing here is that Muslims lose their minds when you quote this passage to them. It doesn't mean that he hit her. It only means that he gave her a shove, or that he poked her, or that he pushed the evil out of her with his holy hadouken. But why in the name of common sense would Muslims think that beating women and child brides is bad when Allah tells you to beat rebellious wives into submission in Surah 4 verse 34 of the Quran? Fact, Muhammad and his companions were wife beaters. If you think that wife beating is morally wrong, congratulations. You're a better person than Muhammad and his companions.